Now, so far, I've talked about a lot of explicit labeling. Uh, so, like I mentioned, we ask people to annotate data. Uh, this is an expensive process in time and also uh, with respect to, yeah, it's just an expensive process. And so these annotations, of course, can be, uh, can be very expensive to, to achieve. So what I want to talk about also is really to utilize the power of the fleet. You don't want to go through this human annotation bottleneck. You want to just stream in data and automate it automatically. And we have multiple mechanisms by which we can do this. So as one example of a project that we recently um, worked on is the detection of cut-ins. So you're driving down the highway, someone is on the left or on the right, and they cut in in front of you into your lane. So here's a video showing the autopilot detecting that this car uh, is intruding into our lane. Now, of course, we'd like to detect a cut-in as fast as possible. So the way we approach this problem is we don't write explicit uh, code for, is the left blinker on, is the right blinker on, track the cuboid over time and see if it's moving horizontally. We actually use a fleet learning approach. So the way this works is we ask the fleet to please send us data whenever they see a car transition from a right lane to the center lane or from left to center. And then what we do is we rewind time backwards and we automatically can annotate that, hey, that car will, turn, will in 1.3 seconds cut in in front, of the, in front of you. And then we can use that for training the neural net. And so the neural net will automatically pick up on a lot of these patterns. So for example, the cars are typically yawed. They're moving this way. Maybe the blinker is on. All that stuff happens internally inside the neural net just from these examples. So we ask the fleet to automatically send us all this data. We can get half a million or so images. And uh, all of these would be annotated for cut-ins. And then we train the network. Um, and then we took this cut-in network and we deployed it to the fleet. But we don't turn it on yet. We run it in shadow mode. And in shadow mode, the network is always making predictions. Hey, I think this, this vehicle is going to cut in from the way it looks. This vehicle is going to cut in. And then we look for mispredictions. So as an example, this is a clip that we had from shadow mode of the cut-in network. And it's kind of hard to see, but the network thought that the vehicle right ahead of us in, on the right was going to cut in. And you can sort of see that it's, it's slightly flirting with the lane line. It's trying to, it's sort of encroaching a little bit. And the network got excited, and it thought that that was going to be cut in. That vehicle will actually end up in our center lane. That turns out to be incorrect, and the vehicle did not actually do that. So what we do now is we just churn the data engine. We source that ran in the shadow mode. It's making predictions. It makes some false positives, and there are some false negative detections. So we got overexcited in sometimes, and sometimes we missed a cut in when it actually happened. All those create a trigger that streams to us and that gets incorporated now for free. There's no humans harmed in the process of labeling this data. Incorporated for free into our training set, we retrain the network and redeploy the shadow mode. And so we can spin this a few times, and we always look at the false positives and negatives coming from the fleet. And once we're happy with the false positive, false negative ratio, we actually flip the bit and actually uh, let the car um, control to that network. And so you may have noticed, we actually shipped one of our first versions of a cut-in detector um, approximately, I think, three months ago. So if you've noticed that the car is much better at detecting cut-ins, that's fleet learning operating at scale. Yes.